The archetypal poor white working man might have gone the way of the dinosaur in the Sunbelt boom. His descendant, what the cartoonist Doug Marletti, the creator of the kudzu strip, called Faux Bubba, was on the rise. And here, you know, with the depletion of Americans, America's natural good old boy resources due to the homogenization, gentrification, and urbanization of their homeland into something called the, the Sunbelt, the Faux Bubba, the fake good old boy lifestyle, affords all the perks and bennies of a colorful ethnic identity with none of the unpleasant cultural downside like getting laid off your job or cut in a knife fight. <laughs> so robots, bankers and engineers, suburbanites and retirees who didn't live that stereotypical good old boy style, or, but, um, but often displayed the badges of a tame, commercialized rural white outlook, driving pickup trucks, listening to country music, sometimes even flying Confederate flags. And during the 1970s and 1980s, this spread across the nation. But not only a certain set of consumer practices and cultural attitudes, but also a set of shared political attitudes. They resented government interference, or they excluded the military from the hit list of government programs that they hated, that disliked bureaucrats, pointy-headed intellectuals, and welfare catalogs. The beliefs and resentments created a potent political force. Sunbelt conservatives would succeed. They would accomplish what the radical left of the 1960s had only dreamed of. They actually captured a political party and won control of the White House. The rising Sunbelt, a new political force, would define the terms of American public life for a generation. Which brings us finally back to where we started. In describing the modern South as a set of ironies and paradoxes, Woodward, the historian, turned out to be not quite accurate. Because on the one hand, the coexistence of poverty and plenty, growth and stagnation, high-tech research parks and underfunded elementary schools, on the one hand, that was not a paradox at all. That was policy. The hand of the federal government had shaped the South's journey from Cotton Belt to Sun Belt, sparking changes that had been almost impossible to imagine a few decades earlier, and yet still accounting for some of the lingering shadows as well as the gleaming structures of the Sun Belt. But on the other hand, I have to admit now, you know, when I wrote my book, I was thinking, ha, look, I showed that Woodward was wrong. He said it was irony and paradox. I showed it wasn't irony and paradox. It was really policy. It was deliberate. But as I've gotten older, I don't know if I can say wiser, but as I've gotten older and thought about it more, I realized that on the other hand, the story turned out to be more paradoxical, more full of irony than even C. Van Woodward had imagined because massive federal government intervention in the region would nourish a public philosophy, a political attitude that made federal, massive federal intervention in the future unthinkable. A process of Sunbelt growth meant to Americanize the South, to eliminate its most distinctive alien characteristics, succeeded, but succeeded in making the nation in the model of the Sun Belt. Thank you.